You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Billy Carson here, Forbidden Knowledge. Welcome to the Forbidden Knowledge podcast. I had an amazing interview with Brad Olson. Brad Olson is an award-winning travel writer, publisher, and producer. He gained notoriety in February 2010 when his travel guide, Sacred Places of North America, made the Bay Travel Writer's Top Gold Prize Award. He's also a world traveler, a historian, and a researcher. He actually goes out in the field to do the research. He's an amazing author of many, many books. So I want you to stay tuned for this amazing interview that I had on my podcast with Brad Olson. Okay, we are live. All right. So Brad Olson, welcome to the show. Hey, Billy. My pleasure to be here. I always enjoy uh, your talks and our conversations. And yeah. Thank you, man. Listen, I've been following you online, too, even you know since the last time I saw you. And I can see you've been trekking like all over the world, going to Antarctica. I mean, <laughs> you've been going everywhere. Um, what have you been up to? Well, lately, uh, pretty much, pretty much domestic travel. It's hard mm -hmm. to get overseas. I don't want to sit in a two-week quarantine in some places. Right. So just mainly doing a lot of interviews, uh, promoting the new book, and uh, getting domestic travel in. It's ski season yeah. now out here in the West, so. Right. Heading up to the mountains when we get some snow. Nice, 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 man. Yeah, I got a chance to go through the book. What a powerful book! Um, <laughs> you know your, your 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 knowledge and the way that you lay it out. What I like is you you make it so understandable for the average person. You know, and that's really really important. And the way that you wrote this new book, Beyond Esoteric, is just dynamic. You really found a way to incorporate. Um, a lot of you know the different topics that we call conscious community like to talk about into this one book it's pretty impressive can you hold the book up because i only have the digital version right now yeah sure it's yeah. uh 480 pages wow. of uh six years of research wow and I, I think there are no coincidences in the world as you know billy <laughs> that uh this book came out at a very important period Mm -hmm. what we're all going through right now, the yeah. zeitgeist of the age, so to speak. And, yeah. and the market has responded well. I've gotten a lot of great feedback such nice. as yours and yeah. um, a lot of great reviews, five stars on Amazon. And wow. it's just uh, really been a, a, a good time to mm -hmm. launch this book in spite of all we've been through. Yeah, it really is. And the name really speaks to what the content is about. You know, you talk about the things that are happening. I mean, you, you, you give dates, times, places, you know, uh, and then you kind of really but build into like, well, what's beyond this? You know, and it's pretty impressive. What what can, you know, when did you say, you know what? I got to write a book. I got to put a culmination of this information into a book. Well, gosh, Billy, this is my 10th. Uh, and wow. it's preceded by two others in the esoteric series, Modern Esoteric and Beyond Esoteric. And mm -hmm. yeah, before this, I was a, a, a travel book writer uh, mm -hmm. last decade. I've been writing books for 25 years now. And Beautiful. so I did uh, a whole series on uh, sacred places, mm -hmm. travel guidebooks in North America to Europe and around the world and nice. a handful of other travel books leading up to this. And the way it all started was when I self-financed a three-year trip around the world, I magnetically found myself going to these sacred places and uh, places like the Great Pyramids, yeah. which I know you've been to, and it's just mm -hmm. mind-blowing when you see them. You, and you really are left with more questions and answers sometimes. Mm -hmm. How did these things get here? Who built them? What is it all about? And so those are the the esoteric sides of some of these uh locations that yeah. got me interested in these esoteric subjects and this three book series. Yeah, that's beautiful. I have the modern esoteric book. I have that autographed by you actually. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I have your uh, Emerald Tablets books and I love that book, man. You Thank did a great job on that as well. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I love that book. Uh, and so in this book, you, you really tap on a lot now, right now, currently, obviously what's in the current news besides the, the sickness, 
a lot of information have come up about UFOs. What do you tap on in your book about the UFO? I see a section here called the UFO question. Right. Right. And there's actually a whole uh, segment or a whole section in the book mm -hmm. on the embargo, the truth embargo that we have been subjected to. And really, when you think about what has been kept from humanity, mm -hmm. we're looking at like 90 percent of the really juicy, important subjects and technology that have just been withheld from us. Mm -hmm. And, and, and some of that ties into UFOs, such as zero-point energy and uh, free energy. And so tied together, when we start to really put this mosaic together, it, it has been an embargo on a lot of this uh, technology. And, of course, you know, I met at Contact in the Desert, which is a great conference on UFOs and all the subjects surrounding it. And so in my book, I put it in this section called embargo, which is the, tr the truth embargo that uh, has been withheld from us. Right. And I include a lot of things such as the underground bases as well and uh, extraterrestrials, the inner terrestrials, you know, how we've always been taught yeah. to think, oh, they're coming from up there. But what <laughs> if they're right below our own feet? And yeah. if they have the ability to phase in and out of our reality, the ultra terrestrials. So mm. I think it's very important for people to understand yeah. there, there are many distinctions of um, extraterrestrials and how they may be interacting here on Earth. Yeah. You know, and what's interesting is a lot of people tend to think as soon as you say alien or extraterrestrials, they start to think of like a little green man, you know, right. because the programming is like, OK, it's just a little green man from another, maybe from Mars or somewhere uh, or the grays. But the truth is they could look a lot like us and we could look a lot like them. And then the other truth is like what you just said. If somebody knows how to obtain the subatomic frequency, let's say, of this dimension, and they're in a higher dimension or a different universe, and they can just walk right in. You know, so it's all based on your level of technology and your understanding of how you can manipulate nature as to where you can go. Yeah. Good point. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I agree with you. They could look very much like us or walk down the street. And we wouldn't even recognize them. Yeah. That a lot of extraterrestrials, especially the benevolent ones, mm -hmm. which I think have been here throughout history, in, in a more of a non-confrontational kind of way or non-interactive sort of way, but are watching our development and are very, very curious, especially right now, yeah. that this period of time that we're going through is absolutely fundamental for yeah. the progression of humanity on this planet. And while I call the subtitle of this book Escaping Prison Planet, yeah. I do believe that we can make that the prism planet nice. and make that the ascension to 5d mm. uh and and i would like to say i think we can do it in our lifetimes billy and i would very much like to be a part of it and i know your your revelations in the emerald tablets have been very helpful in seeing that our ancestors also had this knowledge too and yeah. so now we're putting this all together these esoteric right. subjects have, really helping us understand our place in this world and mm -hmm. how we may be interacting with the friends from above. Exactly. Exactly. This is the time like this book, your book comes out at the perfect time. You know, like I wrote the compendium of the Emerald Tablets based on the Emerald Tablets and all these people that are coming out with these books, these esoteric books, these wisdom guides before I think only small parts of those that wisdom and that knowledge was being understood. More only on the, you know, kind of on the spiritual side, but it's kind of almost like folklore. Now in this era that we're in right now today, like you say, that 5D ascension potentially coming here soon. It really is like your knowledge, your wisdom, everything you've acquired over all this time, all that fractal of wisdom. And you put it into a book, what I put out, what other people put out. It's now for the people of this era. This is the time when the people can actually digest it, discern it, understand it and actually learn from it so we can actually usher ourselves back into a golden age and become this higher thinking being that we're supposed to be. Yeah. It, it really is the destiny of humanity to do that. We've heard through the Emerald Tablets that mm -hmm. the golden age is yeah. here within our grasp. This will be the thousand years of peace. 
Mm-hmm. We've got these speed bumps to get over right now, but they're just little delays right. in what is inevitable. And that is the human race coming together where there will be no more starvation or mm-hmm. deprivation or tearing down this planet that we do come together and we make this the garden planet it's always meant to be. Right. It doesn't have to be a prison planet. Those are the constraints that have been placed upon us. And when we shake the yoke of the oppression, Mm -hmm. uh, we will find ourselves in a glorious age. And I know I can't wait to see it in this lifetime. And I've been waiting a long time for this. I know. It's like it's so close. You can taste it. You can smell it. I mean, it really is. And people are like, why are you always so excited? Why are you always so pumped up? I'm like, you don't understand, man. With all the craziness that is going on out here, it's not that things are getting worse. They're just becoming more obvious. But more people are asking more questions. I can hear people in restaurants and places talking about things that they would never talk about publicly before. You know, the awakening is happening. And, you know, and I think that um, even with even the, re- the reduced amount of exposure that the Pentagon and the government's talking about UAPs and UFOs, even that little tiny bit, it adds to it. It all is like a snowball rolling down a hill right now, you know? And you would never have heard anything disclosure related even five years ago. So it's the drip, drip, drip of disclosure through the government. But now it's becoming a pretty steady stream. And I've always said disclosure comes from the ground up. Mm -hmm. It's people like us or overhearing a conversation in a cafe Mm -hmm. where people are starting to talk about this and understand it at a fundamental level. And know this is who we are and this is our place in the cosmos. Yeah, absolutely. A question that a lot of people ask me, I just want to get your take on it. A lot of people ask, well, if we can have this golden age, if we can be this incredible species that is could be spacefaring and we can do all these great things and ascend to higher dimensions of consciousness and all this stuff, why would the people, you know, running this planet want to keep us so dark and dingy and, and dominant? What is what's your opinion on why they hold all this so close and try to dominate, you know, mankind like this. Well, you know, I'm a very optimistic person like you are, Billy, and I want to see us really reach this this golden age and, and play our bit yeah. in helping people understand. But I, I also have to call a spade a spade. And, and the first part of Beyond Esoteric is called neo-fascism, <laughs> where I go into the whole concept of this control matrix that has got us here. And look, they love to control us. They mm-hmm. love the power and they have for a long, long time. Yeah. Here's an example. Just think about the times of ancient Egypt. Yeah. And you do discuss some of this in uh, the Emerald Tablets, yeah. that the Pharaoh was considered a living God. We, he was worshipped. He was a man like you yeah. and I, but he was worshipped as a living God. Yeah. Then you have the Caesars of Rome who also were portrayed as living gods. Mm -hmm. And now you have the Pope in Rome and he's got an ear to God. So all this time, all these thousands of years, we've had this control matrix where they're telling us what to think, how to think, how to spend money, how to spend our time and who is really in control. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're kind of seeing that the emperor wears no clothes and they're just, uh, usually little old men, kind of like the Wizard of Oz, and Toto's pulling the curtain back and <laughs> who's behind the controls, right? Yeah, for real. Yep. I mean, literally, like literally, if people can actually see these men's faces, yeah, I think they would slap themselves and be like, this is what's controlling everything we hear, see, touch, smell, feel, how I feel about you, how you feel about me and everything else. These people, yep. you know, right. um, man, I just... And it's just a small amount of people. This is why I really do believe, like, you talked about the benevolent aliens, right? They're watchers watching us. And yeah. I think that they're watching and waiting for us to grow up. Like, when will these now 8 billion people at this time um, stop letting less than 100 people control everything they do, see, smell, hear, touch, feel, how they feel about others and even them, their own selves? What kind of technology they can get access to and can't get access to? And so I think, you know, if we can all, first of all, we got to drop this whole borders and races and colors and all this craziness. Yeah. That's the thing that's really that, that trick they put in that's really help keeping us back. It's the only thing I think that's keeping us springing right into the golden age. That last big hurdle we got right there to get over, which we will. But 
it's just amazing, you know, that, that they've been, they're, they're waiting for us to, to start crawling and start walking. Uh, because right now we're kind of crawling, obviously, and we're getting ready to start taking some steps. Now, this is where the bumps come in, I think, is when, you know, your baby takes the first step or two, it falls down again. And so people tend to feel like, oh, man, it ain't working. But no, that's part of the learning how to walk process because a baby has to take steps, fall, learn, take some more steps, fall, learn. And even when we walk, we're just using controlled falls to move around. That's what walking is, controlled falls. And so when we can learn how to control our falls more and put ourselves in check and get that brain heart coherence back and check ourselves individually, then I think, you know, we can be a blessing to everyone and we can really come together and we will grow up and they will see that. And then they will say, hey, guys, hey, we're here. You know, that's what I think. Yeah, no, good point. And look, it's all been about divide and conquer. It's all us versus them. There is none of that. That's all been an illusion. They've just propped that up to think that, oh, somebody overseas is different. Therefore, we can kill them. We can uh, take their land and resources. No way. Yeah. It ain't working anymore. Yeah. Uh, we're all in this together. We're yeah. one human family. And mm -hmm. as Martin Luther King said, look, we're all we all bleed red blood. Yes, you know, sir. we're all part of the human family. So we do our part in nonviolent resistance, as Dr. Mm -hmm. King so glamorously proved. This mm -hmm. is how you move mountains. This right. is how you start a consciousness revolution. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not going to win this by biting them with guns and violence no way that's not how it works the real peacemakers know that it's done with nonviolent re resistance and so when people stop complying mm -hmm. with what they want us to do that's when we're going to see great change right and and i think we're already on the cusp of seeing that yeah absolutely we really, really truly are i think we're really right there you know um what do you think, in your opinion, um, would be, you know, one of the ways that we as a uh, as human beings together can stop participating in this system and kind of create our own systems? What do you what is your opinion on that? Well, again, like a page out of the art of war mm. is divide and conquer to try to keep us um, divided. Well, it's a really a mindset, Billy. And I know you're with your coaching and how you help people yeah. reach their full potential. It's the same way with the human race. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that we have incredible potential, yeah. what we can do and, and what our pineal gland will allow us once it's decalcified and, <laughs> and get our body in tip top shape. And I know you're, you're a real athletic guy and, yeah. and are working, you eat well and exercise mm -hmm. and get out and, Enjoy the sunshine. Well, yeah. all the things that we're told in the pandemic that we can't do <laughs> yeah. is just bunk, you know? And yeah. so you got to see through the matrix first. Right. I think that's a real important first step is realizing that we've been duped and the media has lied to us and uh, they've gotten away with it because everything they do is legal. Yeah, yeah. everything from chemtrail in the skies to yeah. lying in the media, they've created laws that allow them to do that. Yeah. So, we have to wake up ourselves. And as I say on the back cover of uh, Modern Esoteric, the revolution is consciousness. The revolution mm -hmm. is all of us starting mm -hmm. to wake up. And then all that is hidden will be revealed. And mm -hmm. it is. So it's really a question of how are you going to incorporate that in your life? Because, mm -hmm. look, we have free choice. We can just blow it off and, and occupy ourselves with mindless activities. <laughs> or you can choose to take control of your life. And I know you do this so well with your clients and, and coaching. You can take control of your life and say, hey, this is how, who I'm going to be. Right. This is the information I'm going to allow myself to digest and yeah. put this into a framework yeah. that's not only going to benefit me personally, but also my family because I'll be more successful, my friends around me because I'll be a better person and mm -hmm ultimately all of humanity and help exactly. us do this very and it is traumatic it, it's a tra it, like you said it's the baby falling down but you yeah. get up and you keep walking so exactly. we're going to have a few of those periods of uh disruptions but mm -hmm. ultimately we get through this and yeah. it will be the glorious thousand years of peace the golden age i believe it man i believe it that was you said it so eloquently you know it's just about us 
communicating better, trying to re-coordinate our efforts together, you know, um, man, and, and stop participating. I think, you know, again, if we stop participating in all these systems and we just try, you know, we work together. That's why I'm really so, so, so behind small businesses, independent yeah. businessmen, you know, and people sometimes they get angry at me. Like, why are you promoting this? Or why are you promoting this guy? Well, he's a small business. I mean, you want to give all your money to the big multi-million dollar fortune 500 or should I promote the small guy who's just trying to pay, pay his bills and feed his family? I mean, why would you get angry you know so i think a part another part of this whole process is going to be some of the deep programming of the conscious community too yeah which is why you see me doing things like woke don't mean broke making a song writing a book about it and yeah. you, know, you may see me in a couple of nice cars and things like that but that's uh it's a technique some of it obviously is money because i can rent those cars out and those cars actually bring money in to actually work for me they're employees Smart. You know, and, by that, and by that method i don't pay any money for the cars they're all free but the other side of it is I can catch somebody's attention. There's a lot of younger kids that used, they want to see the flash. So right. all of a sudden they see this and they go, oh, well, what's this going on here? Now I've got to reel them in with the knowledge, you know? And I think every single one of us has our own little technique on how we can reel different, different genres of people in. My technique has been very successful in reeling people in with a little bit of spark. And then I get you in here and now we're going to talk. And then you're going to get this information either through my songs either through my writings, my lectures and workshops, you know, and you, I see how you do, you maneuver. You're, you're, you're like me, man. You know, I mean, it's gotta be painful not to want to, not to be able to just hop on a plane and go somewhere. You know, <laughs> I see you maneuvering around this planet, but your technique, I love your technique because you drop nuggets and then you sit back and then you're peering all over the place. And then you're on a plane and you're over this part of the world. You're this part of the world. You're trekking across the ice. I mean, it's just great because that that's the splash that draws people in. And now you got them. And now you drop a book like this, which is incredible. I mean, I was going through this book and I was like, oh, man, I, I can't wait to get the hard copy, you know, the actual physical copy in my hand because uh, I'm a book guy, obviously, like you, <laughs> uh, because I want to be able to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get more than one copy because there's so many people. The way you laid it out, it's a, it's a way that you reel them in. And now you break down the information where it's all factual. You know, and that to me is 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 one of the most incredible things. A lot of people are trying to put knowledge out, but they're just guessing off the top of their head. They're not really backing it up by facts. It's mostly a lot of opinion based information. A lot of stuff you put in and you've mixed it with your opinion and don't get me wrong, but you've put in information that can be looked up, that can be researched, that can be downloaded. And, and you know, and that's what people need. They need a strong foundation, I think. And that's what you've done, man. So I'm really I'm really impressed with the, the work you've done on this book. Uh, and where do you think you're going next? Like, what's your next big project? <laughs> well, thank you for that, Billy. Uh, I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, I'm working on this book. And as a publisher through CCC Publishing, I'm picking up a couple new authors so i'll be working in editorial capacity and and the promotion of uh michael jaco who's wow. coming out with uh, next generation of intuitive warrior this mm -hmm. summer so working on that book with him and laura eisenhower we're finally getting laura's first couple books uh published through wow. ccc publishing so my my commitment is with them in the next year or two and i'm still strategizing what my next book will be but probably along the lines of something in the esoteric uh yeah. field here yeah and uh so nice. just yeah. keep on keeping on you know we do what we do best and we continue to make ourselves better and i know you're so good with that with your with your coaching uh thank you, man. and and your clients for what you do i appreciate it thank you are you doing any are you going to be doing anything online any virtual workshops or classes or anything <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I do have, um, yeah, uh, several, even live conferences, mm -hmm. although a couple have canceled, mm -hmm. there are still some that are that are going live this year. And uh, so I'll be in one here in San Jose, California uh, next month, mm -hmm. Mystic Minds. I'm going out to Sedona okay. with Michael Jaco and Laura Eisenhower okay. uh, for Spring Equinox and then shooting up to Mount Shasta for another one in early April uh -huh. and then another one in Shasta in the summer. So, yeah, yeah they keep coming in even though some of them cancel uh yeah. we just keep on doing the best we can do hey i understand man i understand if you can do a tv show a tv series what topics would you pick the esoteric topic 
Well, yes, I would. Certainly, it's one of my strong suits. Yeah. Uh, or combined with travel. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. ask me if I'd go back to Antarctica, and yeah. I would with a TV crew. Yeah, Maybe yeah. you'd like to come with. <laughs> and yeah, I'd love yeah. to go to the uh, New Schwabenland area and investigate uh, where the German bases were. Maybe oh, even man. bring a Geiger counter and see if they actually got uh, nuked in uh, oh, the late wow. 1950s. I talk about uh, Operation Argus, yeah. the top secret high altitude nuclear mm -hmm. bomb test, but I really think was a cover for uh, taking out the German base down there. So yeah. that's what I did when I was in South America three years ago too. I was uh, investigating a lot of those locations mm -hmm. such as Bariloche and yeah. La Falda. And I mean, that's what I love to do and I'm good at it and I'm a very good navigator and yeah. love to get to these places. As you know, you right. mind blowing experiences when you can see the pyramids right in front of you. Oh man, I know. What kind of history is that? <laughs> Every, you know, no photo can do any justice for any of the places you go, you know. That's right. <clears throat> you see them and it's like, man, this is incredible. When you get there, it's like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's another level, you know. Yep. Well, I asked you that question for a reason because, you know, I have Forbidden Knowledge TV and yep. we've been doing a lot of TV deals. We got, I think, what will be Eric Von Daniken's last TV series. He's already live. Uh, we've aired episode one or two so far. His whole season's complete. But we're dropping one episode a week. This may be his last. I mean, he's 90. You know, I'm just being realistic. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we've got uh, a, a series by uh, Richard Dolan, UFO Chronicles. And we've got another eight shows, including mine, Ancient Connections. But I'd love to talk to you off air, talk about maybe doing a show, man, where you go out and travel to these places and take a crew and, and you know, do these incredible things. I think the people would love to see it. Yeah, you bet, Billy, of course. I'm a big admirer of all the work you've done. And uh, while international travel hasn't quite come back to the stage it was at a few years ago, um, there's certainly a lot of topics in, in my books that uh, are worth breaking down and, and getting into greater detail. And sometimes video is a, a preferred way. And I know a lot of people like to get their information through audio or video stimuli. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah. but the books always start out with your foundation, just like every movie st usually starts with a, a book or certainly a screenplay yeah. and then evolves into it. So the spoken word, the written word is, is very, very important as well. Yeah. Huge. Very important. I think you have enough in that book to, to do 20 episodes or, of 20 <laughs> seasons. <laughs> Boy, this is forbidden knowledge, a lot of it, but it's all yeah. coming out now, as you know, and, and that's yeah, a good yeah. thing. People you know what's interesting is, so many people still don't know a lot of information that's in your book even exists. You know, there's still a lot of people out there that, I mean, we know the conscious community is growing, but there's still so many people. Like if I went to my next door neighbor and started like just quoting some things out of your book in terms of some real hard factual stuff that they, in my mind, I thought they should know. There's still so many people we can touch with this information, you know? Right. And so, yeah, we got to get it out. We got to get it out. But I would definitely love to have you have your own, you know, your own show, man. That would be phenomenal. Yeah. Well, let, let's definitely uh, talk about that and see if cool. we can make it happen. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. How can people find you online? So if you want to know about what I'm up to and, and the conferences I'll be speaking at, go to bradolson.com, just as it's spelled there, B-R-A-D-O-L-S-E-N.com. And if you want to know more about my books uh, and get a signed copy, go to cccpublishing.com and other authors I've published, including Leo Lyon Zagami and Lon Milo Duquette in the Esoteric series. And as I said, coming up, Michael Jaco and Laura Eisenhower mm -hmm. will be uh, published authors through CCC Publishing as well. So keep an eye on that website. And uh, nice. that's a good way to, to be in touch. Fantastic. And I'll make sure all the links for that are going to be in the caption of this video or in the caption of the audio podcast as well. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. And thank you for spending time with me today. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. And we'll talk to you very soon. Oh, you bet, Billy. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, man. Hi, I'm Billy Carson, researcher, speaker, and best-selling author of the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets and Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. I'm inviting you to join me on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv to enjoy hours of great programming, learn the secrets of ancient Egypt, unexplained structures on the moon and Mars, 
financial literacy, holistic and healthy lifestyles. Go now to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv and get three days free. While there, you can enter to win a Rolls Royce. That's ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Hi, my name is Billy Carson, and I'm the president of Forbidden Knowledge. We have an amazing investment opportunity here for anyone who wants to buy shares in Forbidden Knowledge. The money that's generated from this crowdfunding platform is going to be used to bring on a new content acquisitions partner. We're going to hire a new in-house graphics designer, a social media manager, a put together a customer service team and a customer service management program that will organize and satisfy all the different legs of Forbidden Knowledge Inc. As well as, and of course, make more improved high quality streaming content for the Forbidden Knowledge TV platform, which right now is featured on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, iOS and Android apps, and also of course, the web. The streaming platform is a year old right now and doing very, very well. And we're looking for your support where you can not only be a conscious customer, but also be a part owner in an amazing opportunity that includes streaming TV, book publishing, and e-commerce. Grow with us and earn with us. Forbidden Knowledge Inc. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.